There you are. <laughs> now, this is not an Elton John impersonation. I've got them on because I wanted to show you a book I've got on counting for children. There's a, so lots of books out in the market there which teaches children the alphabet and quite a lot also teaches them the numbering system, the shape of numbers from one to nine. So this is an example of one. I think I'll wear my normal specs to show it to you. A very nice little pop-up book I got perhaps 40 years ago and I don't think of anything quite like the glamour it's got to this to make the numbering system. So that's a, a nice start for a child. They're going to see some something rainbow-like and delicious. What's interesting is that the artist has designed it so there are three numbers on every, every page. So this one, for instance, is one mushroom. And if I pull this down here like this, two spiders come down from below the mushroom. That's clever, isn't it? And then they've got three stones here and with a bit of flip, four snails. Oh, he's fallen down that one. Well, you got the idea, it's a snail. And then coming over this page, we've got five lilies, it looks like. And then underneath them are six fishes. It's sweet. So they've got the five and the six covered there. And then seven, we've got seven clouds. Yes. And behind one of the clouds, this one here, when I pull it, oh, yes, eight birds. That's a nice flip flap for kids. And here we've got nine trees. This is nearly the top. And then so we have ten. Mm, yes, ten apples. Two of them have got worms in them, it looks like staring out of you. It goes on after the 10, all the way up, well, 11, 12 and so on, but the last page I'll show you is where they put them all together, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and finally the 100 page, where they've got all the critters there. But a lovely way of teaching children the numbers. So I expect you are beginning to get the idea, what I'm trying to show you is toys which involve digits or numbers, and there's not that many, but the ones that I've found are really quite fun. I mean, that one you'd wear at a party. I picked it up in New York in 1998 when there was some big do on. I don't know what it was in America for 1998, but I certainly got two or three more elsewhere for the year 2000. That was a big year. And again, they're luminous specs. You wear them on glamorous at parties when you're celebrating that particular event. You're probably very familiar with candles, which have started to do numbers. Certainly not in my early life, but certainly in the last few years. And I have to say, I do like the eight course, the 80, so I had something like that, but I want to thank people very much for marking it. Is that the way it is? It is. So you like those on a, on a cake, and the candle, the actual wick is slightly miss, uh, it's, it's offset, so it does burn down very nicely. And there's a Roman version of it there. And of course, also fairly recently in my lifetime, cards, greeting cards have become more and more popular with big numbers being displayed. So that was one of 80, which is a normal flat card, but inside I put a much more glamorous one, this one here, which is a pop-up card, and that is really quite a bit of glamour, that. And it closes flat, which is very nice. And someone's written on the back. So, a lovely little pop-up one with a eight and zero there. Now, this is an interesting one. There's a company in America called Just Bubbly who make a delightful series of strange-shaped soaps of all sorts. It's a very, very nice pure soap too. I've got a couple of sister-in-laws who swear by the texture of the soap that comes out. Then they've got a one called, the, so it's a maths collection where they have equal signs and multiplication and times and divided signs, but they start off with the 10 digits, including the zero there, all made of soap. And I suppose once you started using them, it loses its shape, etc. But it's done a good job of introducing children to the shape of the digits. There's also a company in Japan, way back, this is 40 years ago, which made a whole series of rulers with lenticulation on it. The Wonder Company of, um, of Japan. I, I bought many of them. This is the one that was mathematical one. So when you held it up like that, as well as being a, a good function of ruler with, uh, with, with an imperial and metric system on it, as you tilted it one way to the other, it gave you two numbers which would be multiplied together. And when you just rocked it very, very slightly, it would give you the answer. And then you could check to see whether you got it right. A little bit of mental arithmetic for children. At the same time, it's a little ruler which they might use for their, 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 their lessons as well. So nicely done. And the most glamorous version of digits is this last here, which I picked up ooh, about six years ago, which were the series of transformers with the digits, each of them represented from one to five. There's a four and there's a five. Each of them transforms, I'll have a go with this one in a minute, into, well, an aeroplane, aeroplane, something like that. This is a helicopter I'll do. That one's a robot. And look, you can put them together as well. There's an astonishing bit of technology going on here. So 
I'll just spend a little bit of time with this one to show how ingenious. That's definitely a four, sticking up like that. But now to operate it, you've got to do all sorts of clever things here with opening things up. There we are, there's a plane, there's, there's the cockpit. I'll get the, uh, the wheel off and I'll get the nose of the plane out to the front. There we are. And we've got the wheels, the wheels underneath appearing there. And then we've got here, we've got a, a little propeller, a little propeller blade because, or we know three, because this is, a, this is a, a, um, a helicopter, if I can get it in the right position. Uh, where does that go? Inside that, I think. No, I think, it, I think it goes up like that. That's right, it goes over that. So to cover the top of the cockpit. And here's a propeller blade, and it opens up into three props like that. This is very elaborate, but a lot of fun for kids to explore. And underneath, you've got a carriage which lifts up. If I can lift this up, oops. There's the back of the thing with a little, a little tail, tail propeller. And we've got more, we've got more, more and more wheels. We've got wheels in the front, and we've got two lots of wheels in the, in the, in the under the fuselage. If I can get it up, there we are. There's three lots of wheels there, so it will actually run on the table. This is not quite right. There's something going on here, I think. I think that probably goes back behind that, actually. Anyway, I'll leave it up there, but that's the idea. is a propeller blade turning like that, and all from a, a figure four. That's how it began, and the others all transform equally into bizarre, bizarre things. What a wonderful bit of technology that is. I've only ever seen them the once. That was 2016-17 at Nuremberg, and they were the most glamorous versions of um, digit, digit toys, toys, digits that turn into toys or novelties or gadgets that I've ever come across, I think. I'll start practicing and learning how to transform them one to the other now that I've got enthused by it. Isn't it a nice idea that? Digits to toys, to soaps, to greeting cards, to a lot of things. Um, it's a very, very nice little pursuit, this. So, more to come, I think.